with geometric as with arithmetic, arithmetic after terms, we are going to start looking at sums. So a geometric series is the sum of the first n terms of a geometric sequence. We define it exact, the series exactly the same as we defined it for arithmetic. It's just that we're adding up geometric sequences instead of arithmetic sequences. So as you get into higher levels of math, you are going to be given some demonstrations of why some things are true. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to derive the formula for the sum of a geometric sequence. And we're going to try to get down to here. And we're going to start with stuff we already know. So we are going to, so this is an example of the kind of demonstration that you will be getting in a university math class when you learn a new formula. They don't just give it to you for free. You have to see where it comes from. So if we're trying to find S sub n, the sum of the first n terms of a geometric sequence, we are adding up the first term plus the second term plus the third term, r squared, plus the fourth term. Remember our power, the exponent of r is one less than the term number. And we're going to add that up all the way to t. This is our t, sorry, t1 here. t1 r to the power of n minus 1. And that's the sum of the first n terms of a geometric sequence. So what we're going to do now is we're going to factor out a t1. Because that t1, we notice t1 is multiplying each term, but it's only multiplying it once. So we get this is equal to t1 times 1 plus r plus r squared plus dot 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 plus r to the n minus 2 plus r to the n minus 1. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do something a little strange. And I'm going to multiply both sides of my term, my, um, both sides of my equation, by r minus 1. Okay, This is r minus 1 times s sub n is equal to t1, and it doesn't, multiplication is commutative, it doesn't matter what order I multiply in. So I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply 1 plus r plus r squared plus dot 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 plus r to the n minus 2 plus r to the n minus 1. I'm going to multiply by r minus 1. Now we have t1 times this big long sum times r minus 1. What I'm going to do now is a little strange. I'm going to multiply the r minus 1. I'm going to expand the brackets with this long expression. I'm going to multiply these two together, which I'm allowed to do by the associative property. If I'm multiplying three numbers, doesn't matter the order I multiply them in. I can multiply the last two first. So r minus 1, notice I'm being really careful to write both sides of the equation because it's going to come into play is equal to, this is going to get a little bit long, so we're going to have a t1, t sub 1. So I'm multiplying by r, so the first bit I get is r plus r squared, so I'm just raising the power of each of these by 1, plus r cubed, plus dot dot dot, plus r to the n minus 1, plus r to the power of n. So each one of these, the power went up by 1 because I multiplied by r. When I expand the minus 1, I'm going to get everything is negative, so I get minus 1. And it's just the same, same thing, but we're switching the sides to a negative. So 1 minus r minus r squared minus r to the third minus a whole bunch of other stuff in the middle minus r to the n minus 2 minus r to the n minus 1. And we don't get a minus r to the n because we're just multiplying by negative 1 and r to the n minus 1 is the highest power. So we've got this whole long thing, but what I can do is I see now that a lot of stuff is going to cancel out. So this r cancels with this minus r. This r squared cancels with that minus r squared. This r cubed cancels with that minus r cubed. My r to the n minus r to the n minus 1 my n minus 2 would cancel with my r to the n minus 2 r to the n minus 1 cancels with minus r to the n minus 1. So all I actually wind up with here 
is that r minus 1 times s sub n equals t1 times, and I have r to the power of n is left over, minus 1. Isn't that interesting? So now, if I were to divide both sides by r minus 1, this, once I cancel it out, will lead directly into that formula. And in this case, r cannot be 1, because if the common ratio is 1, you can't divide by r minus 1. And multiplying by r minus 1 would trivially, trivially make both sides equal. So that doesn't work. OK, hope you were able to follow that. All right, because we're going to do a little bit more. We have a second formula that we use sometime, which actually has a really amazing benefit to it. And we're going to figure out how to get there. So what we'll do first, we are going to take our SN formula. And I'm just going to expand the brackets. So I'm going to write this as t1 r to the power of n minus 1 minus, sorry, t1 over r minus 1. Got to make sure I expand the brackets properly. So once I do this, I notice that, well, this is really just r to the n. If this were t1 r to the n minus 1, it would just be the, ter the formula for the last term or for the nth term. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull an r out in front, which I can do because multiplication remains commutative. So this is the same as r times t1 r to the n minus 1 minus t1 over r minus 1. And if you look here, this part right here, t times r to the n minus 1, that is just tn, t sub n, because that was our formula for how we find tn. So that leads us directly to the second formula, which is s sub n, our nth, the sum of the first n terms of a geometric sequence, is r times the last term minus the first term, and then all of that divided by r minus 1. So the first formula we get, the one with the t1 and r to the n, it's useful when you don't know t sub n, when you don't know the last term of what you're trying to add up. The second formula is useful when you don't know n. And that's the advantage here we have with geometric sequences, is you actually, with geometric series, when you're adding up those terms, you actually don't have to know what term number it is you're adding to as long as you know its value. So with arithmetic sequences, you might remember, or with arith arithmetic series, you might remember we had to go back and figure out what n was. With geometric series, you don't necessarily need to. So similarly, just some definitions here. T1 is the first term, n is the number of terms, r is the common ratio, S sub n is the sum of the first n terms, and Tn is the nth, or the last term. So example one is pretty straightforward. We're going to find the sum of the first 10 terms of this series. So just like with everything else, let's write our formula. We have S sub n is equal to T1 times r to the n minus 1 over r minus 1. Why did I pick this formula? I don't know the last term, so I don't want to have to find it. r is 3. 12 divided by 4 is 3. t1 is 4. So s sub n is 4 times 3 to the, oh, let's write down n is 10. 3 to the power of 10 minus 1. Notice this uses not r to the n minus 1. This formula uses actually r to the n. So that's going to be over 3 minus 1. Again, I would be really careful with how you calculate this. I wouldn't just type this into a calculator. I would do a little bit of preliminary simplifying first. So here we would get 4 times 5,900,408. That's 3 to the 10th minus 1 over 2. And that is equal to 
and I can make sure I've done my calculations properly. Because um, you do have to be careful about order of operations, and sometimes your calculator won't do order of operations the way you think it will. So if you're trying to divide by 3 minus 1, you have to put brackets around the 3 minus 1, for example. So just be wary. Okay, example 2. We're going to determine the sum of the series 1 27th plus 1 9th plus 1 3rd plus a bunch of other stuff plus 7 29. Here's where the advantage of our new formula comes in. So we have s sub n r to the t sub n minus t1 over r minus 1. So I know the last term. I don't know which number in the sequence it is. So I don't know how many terms there are. But in this case, I don't need to. I could try to figure it out using my t sub n formula. But honestly, again, if I don't have to do the work, I prefer not. Our common ratio is again 3. 1 27th times 1 times 3 is 1 9th times 3 is 1 3rd. T sub n is 7 29 and T 1 is 1 27th. So now we're just going to plug everything in. We have 3 times 7 29 for T n minus 1 27th all over 2. We can have some fun with fractions and get a common denominator for the 2 in the numerator, and we get 59049 oh, over 27 minus 1 over 27 divided by 2. When we do 5049 oh, divided by minus 1, we get 59048. Oh, oh, Divide that by 2, we get 29524. So our final answer is 29524 over 27. And this is our exact answer. If you got a repeating decimal, you would need to write it as a repeating decimal if you want to get the exact sum. Or you can leave it as a fraction, which I actually find easier. OK, one word problem to finish things off. An equilateral triangle has sides of length 32 centimeters. So this is a picture. I'm going to write my stuff into the picture. I'm going to have to do a bit of geometry here. A smaller triangle is placed inside the first as shown in diagram two, and the pattern is continued. So what we notice is that this smaller triangle also has to be equilateral. So these sides have to be the same length, which means each of these sides is half the length of the sides before. So that was 16, so that would make these all 8 cm. Okay, And so that means we're halving the lengths of all the sides to get the next one. We're being asked, what is the total length of all the lines in the eighth diagram? So because we have a total, this indicates that we're trying to find a sum. So we're asked for all the lines. So our T1 is actually going to be the perimeter of the first figure. And our T2 is going to be the perimeter of the second figure. Okay, And what we can notice is the perimeter, we have the first one is 32 plus 32 plus 32 is 96. The second one is 16 plus 16 plus 16, which is 48. So the perimeter is half the perimeter of the one before, the perimeter of the new one. So what we're going to do is we are going to set up our term to be let Tn equal the perimeter of the newest triangle. Because then we're going to add them up. And if we add up all the first, second, third triangle, we're adding up all the lines that would occur in the eighth, di eighth diagram. T1 is equal to 32 cm times 3, which is 96 cm. Our common ratio is half because we're halving the perimeter each time. So we don't know our last term, so we're going to use our first formula for S sub n. So S sub n equals T1 times R to the n minus 1 over R minus 1. So S sub 8 is going to be 96 times 1 half to the 8th minus 1 
all over one half minus one. So this one I'm actually a bit more confident to kind of crank through a calculator because my only denominator is two. As long as your denominators only have twos and fives as prime factors, you're going to come out with a non-repeating decimal. So I feel like I can find a nice terminating decimal, and if I punch this into a calculator, I get 191.25, which is in fact a nice terminating decimal. So the final, the total length is 191.25 centimeters. And then that finishes that problem for us.